Welcome to the History of Simple Things, where we delve into the fascinating history behind the little things that shape our world. Anodizing is a process that might seem complex at first glance, but once you understand it, you'll realize how it significantly impacts many of the items we use daily. Whether you're looking at a sleek, shiny smartphone, an outdoor metal bench, or even the rims on a car, there's a good chance you've encountered anodized metal. In this video, we will delve into the intricacies of the anodizing process, its history, its applications, and the various types of anodizing, providing a comprehensive understanding of why this process is so important in manufacturing and design. But first, what exactly is anodizing? At its core, anodizing is an electrochemical process that converts the metal surface into a durable, corrosion-resistant, and aesthetically pleasing finish. Most commonly applied to aluminum, though it can be used with other non-ferrous metals, anodizing enhances the natural oxide layer on the metal, making it thicker and more resilient. This thickened oxide layer is not only integral for protection, but also allows for the application of vibrant colors, which are locked into the metal during the process. These colors don't fade easily, ensuring that anodized products maintain their appearance for years. To grasp the anodizing process, we must first explore the science behind it. Metals like aluminum naturally form a thin oxide layer when exposed to air. This oxide layer offers some protection against corrosion, but is quite limited in its capabilities. Anodizing takes this natural process and amplifies it through electrochemistry. The process begins by immersing the metal into an electrolyte bath, typically sulfuric acid. The metal acts as the anode, hence the term anodizing, while a cathode, usually made of aluminum or lead, is placed in the bath as well. When an electrical current is applied, oxygen ions from the electrolyte combine with the aluminum on the surface of the metal, forming a much thicker and more uniform oxide layer than what naturally occurs. This layer is fully integrated with the underlying aluminum, meaning it won't peel or chip like a coating. It also transforms the surface from a conductor to an insulator, significantly reducing the likelihood of corrosion and wear. The thickness of the oxide layer can be controlled by varying the time, temperature, and electrolyte composition during the anodizing process allowing manufacturers to tailor the surface properties for specific applications. The anodizing process dates back to the early 20th century, with its first patent filed in 1923 by a German chemist named Ben Gau and Stewart. Their initial purpose was to protect seaplane parts from corrosion in the marine environment. Over time, the process was refined and expanded to other industries, particularly during World War II, when it became essential for protecting military aircraft. The post-war era saw anodizing being adopted for a broader range of commercial applications, including architecture, automotive, and consumer electronics. Advances in technology allowed for the introduction of colored anodizing, where dyes are introduced into the porous oxide layer before it is sealed, giving rise to the vibrant anodized products we see today. The evolution of anodizing techniques has also led to the development of more environmentally friendly methods, reducing the need for harmful chemicals and minimizing waste. There are several types of anodizing, each tailored to achieve specific properties and suited for different applications. The most common type is sulfuric acid anodizing, which is widely used due to its versatility and relatively low cost. This method creates a moderate thickness oxide layer and is suitable for both decorative and protective purposes. Chromic acid anodizing, on the other hand, produces a thinner oxide layer but offers superior corrosion resistance, making it ideal for aerospace and military applications. This method is more expensive and less common due to the toxicity of chromic acid, 
and the stringent environmental regulations surrounding its use. Another type is hard anodizing, also known as hard coat anodizing, which is achieved by using lower temperatures and higher electrical currents. This results in a very thick, hard and wear resistant oxide layer, often used in industrial applications where durability is paramount. Additionally, there's phosphoric acid anodizing, primarily used as a pretreatment for adhesive bonding in aerospace applications, where the oxide layer acts as an ideal surface for adhesives to bond. Understanding the different types of anodizing is crucial for manufacturers as it allows them to select the appropriate method that balances cost, durability, and aesthetic requirements. Anodizing is ubiquitous across a wide range of industries, owing to its ability to enhance both the functionality and appearance of metal components. In the aerospace sector, anodized aluminum is used extensively for its corrosion resistance, lightweight properties, and the ability to withstand extreme environmental conditions. Similarly, in the automotive industry, anodizing is employed to protect critical parts such as pistons, engine components, and trim pieces ensuring they endure the rigors of constant use. The electronics industry is another major beneficiary of anodizing, where it is used to create the sleek, durable surfaces of smartphones, tablets, and laptops. Anodized finishes not only protect the devices from scratches and wear, but also allow for vibrant colors that are integral to branding and design. Architectural applications are equally significant, with anodized aluminum being a popular choice for window frames, curtain walls, and cladding. The durability of the anodized surface ensures that buildings retain their aesthetic appeal even after years of exposure to the elements. Additionally, anodizing is used in consumer goods such as cookware, sporting equipment, and jewelry, where it provides a combination of durability, lightweight, and color stability. The versatility of anodizing makes it a critical process in modern manufacturing, where both performance and appearance are paramount. Despite its many advantages, anodizing is not without its challenges and limitations. One of the primary limitations is that anodizing is generally limited to non-ferrous metals like aluminum, titanium, and magnesium. Ferrous metals, such as steel, do not respond well to the anodizing process, which limits its applicability in some industries. Additionally, while anodizing provides excellent corrosion resistance, it is not entirely impervious to damage. If the oxide layer is breached, the underlying metal can become susceptible to corrosion, particularly in harsh environments. Anodized surfaces can also be more brittle than the base metal, making them more prone to cracking under stress or impact. Another challenge is the cost associated with the anodizing process, particularly for more complex or larger components. The need for specialized equipment and stringent process controls can drive up costs, making it less economically viable for certain applications. Furthermore, while the range of colors available through anodizing is impressive, it is still somewhat limited compared to other finishing techniques like painting or powder coating. These challenges underscore the importance of carefully considering the specific requirements of a project before choosing anodizing as the finishing method. Anodizing is a remarkable process that enhances the natural properties of metals, particularly aluminum, transforming them into materials that are not only durable and corrosion resistant, but also aesthetically appealing. From its early use in protecting military aircraft to its modern applications in consumer electronics, architecture, and automotive industries, anodizing has proven to be an indispensable process in manufacturing. Its ability to provide a wide range of finishes, from sleek, polished surfaces to rugged industrial coatings, makes it a versatile tool for designers and engineers alike. However, as with any industrial process, Anodizing must be approached with a keen awareness of its environmental impact and limitations. Advances in technology and a commitment to sustainability will undoubtedly continue to shape the future of anodizing, 
ensuring that it remains a valuable technique for years to come. Whether you're a manufacturer looking to enhance your products or a consumer admiring the sleek finish of your new gadget, understanding the anodizing process offers a deeper appreciation for the materials that shape our world. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.